lines wrote in school whilst i should have been studying my lesson by nixon waterman read for librivox dot org by sonia lines wrote in school whilst i should have been studying my lesson i've just about made up my mind to be a poet such as shakespeare and the rest of them big literary gents and dressed in velvet clothes write up the things i see in some grand style to show that browning he has been done up and when plain folks request my autograph then throwing out my chest i'll make them wish that they was great like me i'm tired dwelling midst surroundings where cheap things are always waiting to be done i'd strather loaf and dream and have long hair like all great poets dust and oh what fun to dash off lace and sell them then and there whenever i'll be needing any mun end of poem this recording is in the public domain thoughts thought whilst thinking about mary and her pet lamb by nixon waterman read for librivox dot org by scotty smith full oft i've read how mary's lamb didst go wherever his kind and loving mistress went as if the little creature wast content if it couldst only be where she wast oh i realize what madest it hanker so to be in school that day it surely meant it loved her yet that mean old teacher bent on bossin things he didst not seem to know sometimes i get to wishin i might be a little lamb like mary's fond and true with susan sanderson as mary see we'd play amidst the clover sweet with dew and everywhere that she was there'd be me and if she wasn't i'd be elsewhere too end of poem this recording is in the public domain Lines wrote whilst thinking about how Pa acts when dressing up by Nixon Waterman, read for LibriVox.org by Shan Bateman. Whilst Pa and Ma are dressing up to go to church or somewhere, so I've heard Ma tell the neighbour woman, Pa tears round pell mell and turns things upside down and wants to know who hid his clothes and makes Ma stop and show him where to find them. Ma, she knoweth full well there where he's kept them since he camest to dwell in our house that's been twenty years or so. And when Ma's done is to level best to try to help Pa so he wilt not fuss and fret and found his clothes, shoes, collar, cuffs, and tie, and there ain't nothing more for her to get. Pa looks at her and with an awful sigh says, Thunderation, ain't you ready yet? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. lines wrote whilst realizing we oughtest to be kind to dumb brutes by nixon waterman read for librivox dot org by scotty smith wise william goat familiarly addressed as billy thou art an amusing brute for thou hast some traits that are truly cute and others still so it must be confessed that I hast learned in sorrow to detest. Tis fun to see thee in thy manner mute, when boys dost tease thee, gives some one a butte. Yet he who's it deems thee a sorry jest. Yestreen I met some other boys, and we, at thy expense, wert having much delight till thou gotst around to where i didst not see that thou wast headed my way sorry plight that's why i write this standin woe is me and sleptest upon my bosom all last night end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sonnet wrote whilst thinking of our parents in the Garden of Eden. Written by Nixon Waterman. Read by Moss192 for LibriVox.org. 
O Adam and O Eve, how very nice it must have been to live where you was at. No neighbors anywhere with whom to spat, nor anyone to give you free advice. Ma says she'd gladly pay most any price for such a layout, and she is certain that because there were no servants in your flat is how you camest to call it paradised. And Pa says that if Eve hadst dressed the way our women do, we shouldst have missed the fate of going forth into the world to stray, for she'd be somewhere still inside the gate, delaying things as women does today, or trying for to pin her hat on straight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lions wrote while smartened from punishment received for lying by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Lions wrote while smartened from punishment received for lying. O oh, Washington, O oh, reader, hast thou not in reading high toned poems wrote for show observed how many of them start with O? Oh? Well, anyhow, there is an awful lot. The noble deeds thou wroughtst are not forgot, but serve to make thy name, wherever we go, a household word. If all they say is so, thou didst some mighty clever stunts, that's what. And yet thy fame belongest to thy dead. Thou shinest by reflected light, forsooth, for thou art the only boy that ever had a pa who, when his son dare tell the truth about some kiddish prank, didst not get mad and lamb him o oh, thou heaven protected youth end of poem this recording is in the public domain thoughts thought about mass notions regarding love and housekeeping by nixon waterman read for librivox dot org by sonia Thoughts thought about Ma's notions regarding love and housekeeping. When Sister Mamie said she'd like to learn to sweep the keys of a piano forte, Ma she spoke up and cut her right off short and said she'd rather that a girl of hern should know just how to sweep a room nor spurn a poor but honest man, for that's the sort Pa was. And Ma insists no woman ought to spend more money than a man canst earn. A kid glove dandy with a stovepipe hat, wet ma's proud cousin. Say, but he was sly. Our home shall be next thing to heaven. That was what he vowed. Ma says that that's no lie, for they are packed into a stingy flat, four stairways up and plumb against the sky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thoughts thought while thinking of Peary on a hot summer day by Nixon Waterman read for LibriVox .org by Sonia Thoughts thought while thinking of Peary on a hot summer day O oh, Peary with the scorching summer here and everybody paying double price for little weeny teeny bits of ice it does no longer seem so very queer that thou shouldst have the bravery to steer thy ship up north where it is cool and nice. I'll bet you smile whilst thinking thou hast twice the fun we're having at this time of year. And say, old boy, since thou dost understand the pole is an imaginary spot, why not imagine thou hast found it and, of time and trouble, save an awful lot? Couldst others check thee to that frozen land and prove thou didst not find it? I guess not. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thoughts Thought Whilst Thinking of a Thanksgiving Day Turkey by Nixon Waterman Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson O eagle, emblem of my country, Thou who art the boss of every other bird, My muse, to find the highfalutin word With which to name thee, does not know just how, yet tis not thee who hast, I must allow, my patriotic breast the deepest stirred. And they who planned our country's banner, 
erred in making thee the sign to which we bow for whilst o eagle thou dost dare to climb the highest mountain peak and greet the sun it is the turkey that dost nearest rhyme with all the lofty thrills that through us run he beats thee to a standstill every time for stuffed and roasted say he takes the bun end of poem this recording is in the public domain sonnet wrote whilst thinking of my sister mamie's homely bow by nixon waterman read for LibriVox.org. o oh, love tis said that thou art blind alas i didst not think that it was truly so until i saw my sister mamie's bow who's awfully stingy and as green as grass how love canst make such guise as he is pass for something beautiful i dost not know Hadst I my way, you bet, he'd stand no show of settin' in our parlor wastin' gas. He steals things, too. Last night, whilst in a nook of our dark hall, I heard him say, Alack, I must steal one. This morn I went to look, and found'st all our umbrellas in the rack. And so, I guess, whatever twist he took, my sister Mamie madest him give it back. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines wrote whilst recovering from an accident caused by a hornet by Nixon Waterman read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith O oh, hornet when I thinkst what thou canst do to make strong men just hump themselves and run men who wouldst boldly face a ten-inch gun but lack the sand to halt whilst you pursue and deemst thy stinger something they wouldst rue I've wondered if, when things that weigh a ton, flee from thy wrath, thou dost not deem it fun to chase folks that are so much bigger in you? Didst I, according to my size, possess the means for getting even thou dost own, twouldst be great sport to tackle? Well, I guess, a boy most any size, and hear him moan, as I didst when thou gavest me that caress from something hotter than the torrid zone end of poem this recording is in the public domain lines wrote on a summer day whilst thinking of a soda fountain by nixon waterman read for librivox dot org by jason in panama when I'm a man, I shalt not care to be the president of these United States. I'dst rather be the drug store clerk who waits on people at the soda fountain. He hast lots more first-class fun, it seems to me, for whilst the public dost not get rebates on soda, he canst get it at cut rates, and lots of times I'll bet he gets it free. Of course, I know it must be pretty fine to hear the brass bands and the big bass drums come marching by the White House, all in line and playin', see the conquerin' hero comes. And, yet, no presidential job in mine, the soda clerk's the one that gets the plums. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines wrote after being scolded for not doing as children used to by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. I yearnst to live to be ten times as old as wast Methuselah, the patriarch. Then, when some older person durst remark, When I wast young, the children weren't so bold, and always loved to do as they weren't told and went to bed soon after it was dark i'lst say to him my errin friend now hark to one who wilt no longer hear thee scold i knew thy great 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 grandparents when they wert sly youngsters vexin their poor nurse and children now art good as they wert then they always have been stubborn mean perverse and always wilt be since alas like men 
They're just as heaven makes them, only worse. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines wrote on reading how Cleopatra made men act very foolish by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Today I readst in an old history book how Cleopatra used to make men do just any fool thing that she wanted to by giving em a lovey dovey look. Time was long, long ago when I'dst have shook my head and saidst the story was not true. But that, alas, that was before I knew Miss Susan S., who hast my fancy took. Today I hadst an apple I'dst have not let any boy in school taste, but when she asked couldst she have a bite and took a lot, I didst not mind at all, for, oh, to me, where she hadst bit hadst somehow made the spot taste awful sweet. Thus dost love rule us. See? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet wrote whilst thinking what I wouldst do with Carnegie's gold by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. O great Carnegie, with thy wealth, O oh my, I dost not know exactly what I'd do, but seems to me I'd have more fun than you art having with it. Anyhow, if I hadst money, as they say, to burn, I'd try to burn it here, for, oh, twouldst make me blue, to think I'd have to smell it burning through the endless eons of the by and by. And you can bet if I hadst gold in bins as thou hast got, in quantities so vast thou canst not spend it, I'd buy diamond pins and soda water to the very last. And I'd be sorry that I wast not twins, so I couldst spend my fortune twice as fast. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Some Thoughts Thought Whilst Having to Bathe in a Bathtub by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. I don't like bathing in a bathtub. Say, it's no more like a good old swimming hole where you can dive right in and splash and roll or anything you please than works like play. Some afternoon of a hot summer day when thou from school and pokey things hast stole, oh, ain't it good for heart? and brain and soul to plunge right in and swim your own sweet way i pity folks who bathe where they must wear a bathing suit i wouldst have none in mine give me a good old shady corner where nobody's looking that's what i call fine and when i bathe in this sawed-off affair the swimming hole's the thing for which i pine End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines wrote in school whilst throwing glances at Susan Sanderson by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Oh, what is love? the poet asks. I guess I'd better tell him. When a girl's cheeks seem as fascinating to you as ice cream, and though snub-nosed and freckled, more or less, she's still the phantom of pure loveliness that ever and anon athwart your dream comes stealing whilst you scheme and scheme and scheme to be where she is. Thou art in love, oh yes. When you keep thinking how you'd squeeze her hand if sometime thou couldst be her little glove, and if thou feel'st that thou wouldst like to stand with only just the frosty stars above in some big snowdrift neath her window and stay there for ever, then thou art in love. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thoughts Thought Whilst Mowing the Lawn on a Saturday Afternoon by Nixon Waterman Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Oh, circus day, so very brief art thou, From early morn when first doth rise the tent Till midnight comes and all the show hath went. Thou art like a swiftly passing dream, Oh, how I wish the lagging tasks that wet the brow with perspiration, sweat is what I meant, would haste as thou dost haste. How different this world wouldst be from what we find it now. Or twouldst be better still if time wouldst pass, whilst laughing at the antics of the clown. As slow as runst the sands within the glass, whilst I, neath the sun that almost melts me down, must mow the lawn. O oh, fate, why must, alas, thy smile be so much shorter than thy frown? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet wrote on the fly leaf of my grammar during school hours by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Sonnet wrote on the fly leaf of my grammar during school hours. Oh, education! Maybe thou art all our teachers tell us, but just let me say that if my folks wouldst let me have my way, from early spring till frost comes in the fall, I'dst be outdoors, you bet a playing ball or otherwise enjoying each fine day it seems the shame for boys to have to stay like culprits shut in by a prison wall i guess if you get rich folks will not care if you don't know your grammar to a t for baby boys you'll find most everywhere art named for uncles who has money see though they hain't got no learning they can spare nor never spell their taters with a p End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thoughts thought on here in folks find fault with the weather. By Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Thoughts thought on here in folks find fault with the weather. I love cold winter weather with the snow a drifting on the walks I has to clear and frost-biting nose and cheek and ear with the thermometer away below i also love the summer when it's so red hot that clothes next to you all adhere and everybody's frantic pretty near and saying things that hot folks dust you know i love both seasons but i wish i could enjoy them whilst they're with us for you see it's winter when the summer seems so good and summer when the winter pleases me but somehow i have never understood why either of them whilst it's here's ng end of poem this recording is in the public domain lines wrote after seeing shakespeare's hamlet from an upper gallery by nixon waterman read for librivox dot org by larry wilson o oh, shakespeare thou whom's all the world does think has written some good things i too wouldst pay my best respects to thee yet wouldst i say that whilst i like thee yet i dost not shrink from telling thee that thou art on the blink and very sadly out of date to-day still if thou'lt follow my advice thou may still count as one of us and get more chink your plays ain't any good the way they stand thou oughtest to tone them up with something nice some coon songs fire engines bloodhounds and a swingin bridge and chunks of floatin ice wouldst make your old plays draw to beat the band and folks would crowd your shows at any price end of poem this recording is in the public domain sonnet wrote whilst retrospectively contemplating 
Ma First Cigar by Nixon Waterman, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Oh, woe is me, and other things like that. Yestreen I sought to smoke my first cigar. It gave my system a tremendous jar. I did not have the gumption of a gnat. All night I could not tell where I was at. I wish I knew just what those cheap smokes are. It seems to me they're made of glue and tar. Ah, me, I'm weaker than a half-starved cat. Oh, let them smoke henceforth, sayst I, who will. For who am I that I should dare condemn their vile tobacco? I have hadst my fill. Let others have it. I shan't envy them. For I'll not never smoke no more until I'm ten times older than Methuselah. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet wrote whilst thinking about a vacation spent on a farm by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Sonnet wrote whilst thinking about a vacation spent on a farm. O oh, farmer, independentest of all mankind art thou. I know because last year I spent my whole vacation pretty near on Uncle Eben's farm, and though I'm small, I hoed the corn and beans and helped him haul and stack his hay. I'dst work until I'dst fear I'd just drop down and end my sad career before they'dst give the welcome dinner call. My uncle does not weigh his words with care, for once he told me that I was the shirk, but I wouldst rather breathe the country air than be a shut-in office boy or clerk. For I found out, whilst visiting out there, that I like farming, but I hate farm work. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines composed after seeing a book full of Byron's love letters by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. One reason why I'm most afraid to get so famous like we poets always do is that they'll print my spoony letters too, as is the way with all of us who let our fancies caper. Hadst I thought, whilst yet unknown, I'd be a poet, quite a few endearing words with which I sought to woo more girls than one, I'd not have wrote, you bet. If Susan Sanderson should find I sent the valentine, I saidst I wrote for her, to Jane Jones too, the thirty cents I've spent for soda waters wasted, I'd infer. Why must we poets do things we'll repent? And, oh, why thus didst me and Byron her? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet wrote after hearing a youth orating about Casabianca by Nixon Waterman. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Sonnet wrote after hearing a youth orating about Casabianca. O oh boy that stoodst upon the burning deck, and gotst thyself in our school readers, and the whooper up school speakers of our land, because thou wouldst not leave that sinken wreck, O oh, don't thou think if thou hadst saved thy neck, and wisely cut and run to beat the band, thou couldst have later done things still more grand. Alas, too soon didst death thy valour check. O oh, didst thou stay because thou couldst not swim? Or oh, was it fame for which thy heart didst yearn? Of course thou gotst the name time canst not dim, but seems to me that all I canst discern in thy foolhardy sticken to it whim is that thou deemed the world hadst boys to burn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Sonnets of a Budding Bard by Nixon Waterman.